Hi, I'm Ray from Phone Arena, and this is our Sony Xperia Z5 review. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. At first glance, the Z5 is typical Sony, a logical continuation of the company's long-running Xperia Z line. However, we wonder if the characteristic values of Sony are alive and well in the Xperia Z5. Is it an example of a thought-out, polished Android smartphone, or is it too little, too late? We've waited long enough for the Xperia Z5, and now it's time to see if Sony really has something to serve that's not already on the table. Certain forms, certain shapes cannot go out of fashion. In that line of thought, the Sony Xperia Z5's rectangular shape continues to stand the test of time. It's strict, classy, and different. Unfortunately, as soon as you hold the Xperia Z5 in hand, an unexpected and unprovoked sensation of a sharp object scratching against your skin will surprise you. The frame's edges are so sharp that holding the Xperia Z5 is not a pleasant thing to do unless you put a case on it. The back panel is now made of what Sony calls frosted glass. It's basically glass with a matte finish to it, instead of the typical glossy one. Its advantage is that it picks up almost no fingerprints, so it always looks relatively clean. Unfortunately, it's also extremely slippery, unlike glossy glass, making us feel unsure if we prefer it that way. Meanwhile, the volume buttons are now positioned towards the lower end of the site, making them more difficult to operate than before. On the plus side, Sony is keeping the two-step camera shutter key, and this one works very well. The power key is now also a fingerprint scanner. Uh, when it comes to speed and accuracy, it's pretty decent. But we can't say uh, this is the most convenient spot for a fingerprint reader. 5.2 inches, 1080p, IPS LCD. Sony has to be congratulated for not playing the specs game and sticking with this resolution, because in no way is the Xperia Z5 screen harder to read in comparison to the Quad HD screens out there. Color balance and accuracy, on the other hand, are areas where Sony should have tried a bit harder. The screen has a significant blue tint, taking some of the life away from images. At least, there is a color balance setting that lets you tweak it to your own liking. Visibility is excellent with the Z5. The display can get extremely bright, remaining visible when used in the great outdoors, while bedtime reading is also easy on the eyes, thanks to its reasonable minimum brightness level. Sony has one of the more likable takes on Android, uh, but unlike the timeless appearance of the phone, its software interface is starting to feel a bit tired. It could really use some fresh new colors to give it a more contemporary look. Android 5's material design mantra is fully realized with the Xperia Z5's apps. And while it's probably a smart idea not to stray too far away from Google's fold, apps don't leave much space for the actual content. Throughout the UI, there's that impression that more could be done with so much screen. As far as app functionality goes, Xperia Z5 doesn't surprise in any way. In fact, the overall experience and functionality are largely the same as on previous Xperia Z phones. Some things do manage to stand out though. For some reason, Sony has thought that it would be fun to launch a phone without an app for note-taking. And when a flagship comes with no notes app, but does have one for sketching with your fingers, it should really count as a red flag. Besides that, the automatic brightness control appeared to be overly sensitive at times, while some random freezes brought up questions about the level of reliability. There's a notification LED above the display which helps with catching missed events. It's a feature we enjoy having, uh, though we can't figure out why during charging, the light turns green when the battery reaches 90% and doesn't wait until it's at 100%. The good news is that, as usual, Sony's custom UI feels nicely coherent and relatively straightforward, with few elements that may feel out of place. Unlike some other manufacturers, 
which preferred to go the Snapdragon 808 route, this year Sony decided not to skimp on performance and equip the Z5 with the Snapdragon 810. Considering the resolution has been kept at 1080 by 1920, which is not as power hungry as Quad HD, um, this kind of decision makes sense. Thankfully, um, system performance is top-notch most of the time. There are certain occasions where it does take a little longer for the handset to react, but those instances are quite rare. Having Snapdragon 810 uh, means that there's um, access to high-performance 3D gaming with little to no compromise, which isn't exactly the situation with uh, the Snapdragon 808 phones. Sony offers only one memory configuration for the Z5, 32GB, which should be sufficient for most users. However, if you need more, you'll be glad to know that there's a microSD card slot in the mix. Typical Sony, the Xperia Z5 aims to be more than your average smartphone in the camera department. Aside from a strong spec sheet in the form of a 23 megapixel sensor with size of 1 2.3 inches, the G Lens camera in the Z5 boasts the fastest autofocus in a smartphone, with speed of just 0.3 seconds. As Sony says, that's faster than the blink of a human eye. Which is not entirely true, but we'll let that one slide. As always, Sony's camera application comes with a simple default mode. Superior Auto, as well as a manual one that lets the user tweak the white balance and exposure. It's a consumer-centric approach, there's quite a bit of flexibility with it, but nothing extreme like manual focus or shutter speed adjustments. Additionally, there are some more or less alternative modes like time shift slow motion, creative effect, which is filters, and the absurd AR effect which can render a range of unsightly 3D objects over your scene. Images from the Xperia Z5's camera are not particularly inspiring. They tend to be markedly noisy, hazy and generally undefined. Zooming into the image reveals intense digitalization. White balance, meanwhile, tends to be all over the place. More often than not, images will come out slightly colder than in reality. But in other occasions, the camera may also throw too much red in there. It depends on the situation. Dynamic scenes are handled quite poorly. When in auto mode, the phone should automatically engage the HDR mode when needed, but even then, not enough is being done um, to make the scene tolerable. Highlights remain overexposed and shadows stay overly dark. The front-facing camera doesn't do much better um, than its rear-facing neighbor. Its resolution is 5 megapixel, but the quality is relatively low. Details are smudgy, the whole image looks hazy and undefined, while colors are once again not what they ought to be. 1920 by 1080 video recording is of rather poor quality. Similarly to how the pictures are handled, detail level is remarkably low while colors appear relatively dull. The footage looks much better in 4K, at least as far as details go. However, like most other Android phones, the Xperia Z5 still can't do unlimited 4K recordings, due to temperature reasons. On the plus side, the nasty jello effect that tends to plague so many Android smartphones isn't that apparent here. And the audio that's picked up by the microphone is loud and clear. The 5.2-inch display is good enough for video watching. It has that cold tone to it, but you can fix it using the color balance settings. What's more, the Sony Xperia Z5 is water and dust resistant, uh, which means that entertainment can follow you in the bathroom, or at places that may otherwise prove risky for your phone. Similarly to its predecessor, uh, the Z5 has front-facing stereo speakers, which is good. However, their sound quality is quite mediocre, which is bad. The Xperia Z5 doesn't disappoint in the battery department. The handset easily lasts a day and a half with moderate usage. Plus, it has an amazing standby time. It loses almost no percentage points during the night. 
Our battery life test discharged the Z5 juice pack in 7 hours and 7 minutes, which is an average result. But in reality, when we factor in the great standby time, we think that uh, the phone holds up pretty well. Note the full charging time is 2 hours and 36 minutes. So compared to some of its rivals in the high-end Android space, the Xperia Z5 is really taking its sweet time filling the tank up. We wanted to like the Xperia Z5, but Sony isn't making it easy for us. This otherwise good-looking phone doesn't feel quite right in the hand. The software experience moves at a satisfying pace, but comes with a bunch of issues and imperfections that don't quite suit its price point. The new camera may be fast to focus, but its quality is weaker than expected. At the end of the day, there seem to be few reasons to go with this phone, aside from the fact that it's Sony and that it's water-resistant, neither of which are that high up in our priorities.